Ow. <laughs> Welcome back to the Homestead, guys. So, this morning I got some exciting news. I talked to Midnight Engineering yesterday. They've got their system naming slash adoption. It's like 98% from the testing I've done this morning. So, the issue they had is that they have a display on every unit. So, you can have multiple displays. If you've played with a Snyder system or an Outback or whatever, you'll know that it's one display per system. So a display by nature is sort of controlling of the system. And when you have more than one control, it gets a little confusing, right? It's like it's like if you've got six foremen on the job and one laborer, the laborer is going to be confused because all the foremen are giving them different directions. So one of the things they came up with um, after some brainstorming was to name the system. So on initial boot up, it's going to ask you to give the system a unique name. And then if you buy a new device in the future and add to the system, it would just simply be adopted. You'd have to do no programming at all. Um, the other issue there is if you bought a used device. Let's say you picked up a device later on down the road off eBay and it's already named and you installed in the system. Now the system sees two's name, so it's going to come up and ask you which system do you want to use. One of the unique things about the Midnight system is that everything's powered from the CAN bus. So even though the display is physically like on this Barcelona, it's not, it doesn't know that it's on that Barcelona. It's just on the CAN bus. So CAN bus is this long chain of electrical wire and things just fall under the CAN bus wherever you put them in any order you put them. And they just transmit a, a unique bus ID and a u unique device ID and everybody just talks and when they're asked a question they can answer and you know so on and so forth. That's very simplified. I mean there's all sorts of stuff you can read on CAN bus. All you need to know is that all three displays are on here but only a couple controllers are on. So you'll see the breaker is off on this Hawks Bay. So we're going to use this Hawks Bay as our our new device from Midnight and we're going to use it as our used device from eBay. So that's off. You can see we're up to our naming screen here. I'll see if Sue can't zoom in or get you somewhat stabilized. So this is what you're going to see on a factory fresh unit out of the box. It's going to ask you to give it a name. So we're going to be really unique and we're going to name this one A, B, C. Now, one of the things you'll notice right now is it says press back to continue. And that's not necessarily intuitive. Um, I did suggest to the engineering department last night that maybe they use user to go forward and back to back up. So like, let's say you get into this setup screen and you realize you made an error and you want to go back. Right now, the only way to go back is just to power everything down and power it back up and it'll come back and ask you to start with the name again. So it doesn't set anything until you get to the end. The other thing it does is it locks out all the other displays so nobody else can make any programming. And you'll notice that that is one of the, the one and a half percent I was talking about. While it's locked out, sometimes the words don't show up. So that's something that engineering is working on. So now we're going to go through this setup screen. And we're resetting all devices to default. And now it's going to ask me for chemistry. And I'm going to go... And then, of course, it's going to ask me for a password because this display, I have the password protection on on purpose just to test it long term. And the password is the same as all of the Midnight products. It's 142. And now I can change it from flooded to lithium or whatever else I may want to change it to. But I'm going to stay with flooded. It's going to initialize that in the units. And then it's going to ask me to set my voltage. So 57.6 is the default for flooded. So I'm going to change that just so we can show you something in a few minutes here. So I'm going to go 56.8. I'll save it. I'm going to press back. It's going to ask me for the time. Now the time is correct because we've used this unit before. So now we're done. Now the other displays will eventually catch up, you see. And they've caught up and everybody's happy. So now again, this display is on this unit. This unit is off. So I'm going to go to Setup. And to show you that, I'm going to go to MPPT Config. And you'll see only two units, a Hawks Bay and a Barcelona. So this is the Barcelona, and this is the Hawks Bay that we're seeing currently. Now I'm going to back up one screen, and I'm going to go to Battery Config, and you'll see it's set for 56.8. Okay, so now at this point, this unit is still factory fresh, because it was factory restored, and it's still off. 
Uh, the question came up, Sue asked me actually, how can it be factory fresh because the display's on? And remember back in the beginning I explained CAN bus, where CAN bus is this long chain of electrical wires and anything can sit on the CAN bus anywhere and is power on the CAN bus. So I can drop a display way over here on the CAN bus and that display will come on. It's only going to show the other controllers. It's not going to show this controller. So this controller is still off. I can go here and go to MPPT config and you see I only see two units. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut everything down. I'm going to turn it back on. We'll see three units and we'll see that this is still at 56.8. So now what you're going to hear, you're going to hear everybody do their post test where they spin the fans up on Buddha. But in a minute, you're going to hear this one do a second one because it's going to restore this one to default and then adopt it. So there's your second post on this one as it's being adopted. Because as it was out of the box, its absorb was 57.6. So then we'll go to setup. First thing I'll do is show you that we have all three devices. One, two, three. So now you see the third Hawks Bay. So then I'm going to go to the battery configure and you should see 56.8. So now that's been adopted. So now let's do one more thing here. Um, I want to show you what happens when you buy a used piece of equipment. So what I'm going to do is remember we named everything ABC. I'm going to go ahead and shut down off camera. You guys don't need to watch me do this. I'm going to set this one up fact refresh and name it DEF. So I'll bring you guys back when I get this one named and we power everything up. All right, so we're back. We went ahead and did a factory store on this one. We set it up, we named it DEF. And then we named this, we left these two as ABC. So now this unit would be like it was if it came off eBay and it's somebody's already used it, it's already set up. We're gonna go ahead and turn everything on. And what should happen is this should come up and ask us, which is the correct system? So there you go. It says new device detected. Select which system to use. So you'll notice ABC and DEF. So we can pick which one of those we want to be our system. And you notice the other displays went over to their main screen. As soon as I touched the knob, these guys went to their main screen and locked out. And the reason for that is you, you don't want like multiple displays in the system and you don't want two people pressing buttons at the same time. So the first person to get a button wins. Uh, so in this case, we're gonna pick ABC because that's our primary system. We've highlighted it and we press back to continue. Now it's initializing the new device. We'll hear it do its post. And that's pretty much it. That is the system startup. So for you guys out there that buy a single unit, you just gotta give it a name set your parameters like you normally would. If you buy a used unit, then, and it's a single unit, you're not gonna see that name because it started up from fresh. So what you're gonna wanna do is you'll wanna do a factory restore on the device. So if you buy just a single new uh, used unit off like eBay, you have no other midnight equipment, you're gonna wanna do a factory restore on that. And then it's gonna come up and ask you to do that naming convention and everything. So hopefully that was kind of useful. Hopefully you kind of get to see the the, how it works and maybe saw a couple of the bugs. So right now, this is uh, 9.7, I believe. And the code release that they sent me last night to play with, I can tell you that I found three bugs and they're very minor. Um, the Right now, the unit follows the lowest UUID for voltage. So this one being the oldest has the lowest UUID. So if I adopt this as a used unit, it does everything that one does instead of what it's supposed to do. Pretty minor thing. And you'll notice, you may have noticed if you're watching closely, this screen had a few garbles on it where it shouldn't have. And the third one I noticed was this one had English, Spanish, or French show up on the screen when I was in the setup menu. So there's a few little quirks still, but you know, they're getting really close. They've got most of the functionality working. Um, there's a couple quirks still in the charge controller where the kilowatt hours don't reset at night. They just keep accumulating. And I think battery voltage sense is yet to be implemented. Um, I did report that the state of charge 
So those of you that have used the Classic and Whiz Bang Jr. know that if you shut the device off and turn it back on, it remembers the state of charge. So I reported that as a bug to the Midnight's Engineering Department. But yeah, uh, other than that, really excited, really close. We're going to fire the PV up on these. We're going to let them run for the day. And uh, we're going to report what we found at midnight and kind of go from there. So hopefully you guys found that interesting and helpful. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.